Good job, guys. Um, debrief time. All right. So first question, mm -hmm. what is something cool that someone else did? I liked uh, Wilhelm's goodbye. And that you actually like thought out what each person would be given from Cyril's stuff. Yeah, I'm excited for Dala to check out the uh, sword. I'm glad that, I mean, it would have been touching if he had been carted away with the sword, but I'm also glad that it's mm -hmm. not disappearing. <laughs> I felt that should stay with the party, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now Torin is going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> Torin, like, uh, like World of Warcraft Torin? Uh, no. It's T O R R E N. Yeah, um, I really, I, I thought everyone did a great job staying in character, uh, like, if mm -hmm. we're finding out more about people's characters, Dala, taking gold, uh, <laughs> <but> I, like, <laughs> I like how, like, Nebuchadnezzar, like, <laughs> took the ring and, like, slyly tried to make his way downstairs and stuff like that, so, uh, that was cool, and Haley at the campfire and stuff, so. Yeah, good job. Mm -hmm. I thought it was funny when, when Chad was trying to put his dirty fingers in the in the food and Haley just was like oh no I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna use it we're gonna use this food. <laughs> I thought that was funny any other cool stuff I thought it was uh also the same as as Derek when you were like putting all the story together for Will but at the same time all the story together for Torin at the end because it's like a completely different personality than Sarel, but at the same time, like you were explaining all these things, you thought out all these things also, including the way that this guy would speak. So <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really excited for them to find out more about your character, Derek. It, uh, some, there's some cool stuff there. I also think it's cool that you brought Radagast into this. Right? The iconic characters. Yeah. I feel like there's not, yeah, I, I I I like I I liked what Haley Haley did with like uh with uh when she and Dala were when she was trying to grieve and she just talked a lot. I thought that was pretty great. <laughs> pretty good. <Yeah. laughs> Meanwhile, like yeah, the just talked for hours. Yeah. Don't yes. crowd the pan or you know. I realize this is myself, but I was really glad I rolled a natural twenty on that performance check. I thought that was a good one, yeah, too. I was I love when the dice like fit the narrative it's fantastic because it's so painful when the opposite happens like if you had rolled a one on that it just would have felt <laughs> bad like it just would have felt bad so i was so happy that that's not what happened i like how um Edrahel and eldercar were uh willing to be friendly to Torin, especially eldercar who's like i know what it's like to be <laughs> the only person who's met in the middle of the woods and <laughs> be treated like suspiciously so well, you met a stranger in the middle of the woods. I mean, I, that's true. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone is a threat. <laughs> Any other cool stuff? Ink. What? Cool stuff. Uh, oh, really bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Good job. All right. Next question. What were some challenges you as a player or your character face? Um, still just like Haley not being in a city environment. Um, really happy that we're out of the Merkwood, but understanding that like even as we make our way closer to Mordor, we're not going to necessarily be in a place where she's most comfortable. So just trying to figure out best ways to serve the party. Hopefully we can make a pit stop someplace <laughs> on the way or maybe when we get to the tower. Yeah, I think uh, I think for Nebuchadnezzar, like he's been part, part, part of his backstory is like he's been traveling around for many years and has lost many people that he's kind of gone with, like continually losing people all the time. So like uh, him doing, doing with grief is just kind of like, let's just move on. But he knows that the rest of the party wants to grieve. So the challenge is like, you know, like, He's not a very sympathetic guy to begin, so he doesn't really know how to like tune things down e either. Because he's like in his mind, like this is just par for the course. 
regardless of what he's gone through so many times. Uh, and as messed up as it is, I mean, he only knew your guy for like what, like a few weeks or less. Yeah. So it wasn't Just like three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was like a, a year or friend he'd had for like years to come. So he's kind of like, you know, trying to figure it out. But I felt like when Haley did the song, that kind of gave him a cathartic moment to just kind of let his emotions out for all those who he'd kind of lost there. So. Yeah, that was really good. Or when um, Al Dakar, he was trying to take that th- that brick out or, and, and he got the, the poison or the thing in him. And, um, and I was, I was like, <gasps> I was on the edge of my seat. Cause I was yeah. like, oh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> no, you said you had one hit point left. I was like, hmm. whoopsie. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, also, uh, hard losing two horses. <laughs> yeah, I debated that, but I thought Will would definitely want to take the horses back to Rohan. <laughs> it makes the day, bro. He left us on foot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna feel for miles. Oh man! Still have Alagos. Still have Alagos. And the uh, and the other horse. Yeah. So how many people do we have at our party? We got to fit that in two horses. So three for poor poor horse then. Plus <laughs> plus the dog. Yeah, not happening. It's right. uh, <laughs> oh, Alagos. Oh. Alagos and I am the five of you and the other. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just a it's just a hound, but Torin can definitely ride. Um, it's like it's like it's like an adult on like a child bicycle. <laughs> Haley might be able to ride him. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe we can roll for it. Um, I think for me, uh, yeah, I had uh, prepared kind of all the stuff I wanted Will to say, and so on one sense I was cathartic, but on another sense, like doing it was like strangely emotional. So <laughs> I was like, ah, gotta get through this. Uh, but yeah, I thought I wanted to uh, have a, a way to uh, kind of tell Cyrell's story and also have Will share that with the party. So, yeah. yeah. It was good for, for the party to get a bit of like a, a lore dump on Cyrell since they didn't get a chance to hear some of that. So it was definitely good. Christina, were you actually tearing up or were you wiping away fake dollar tears? Mm, fake dollar tears. Fake dollar tears. you were actually tears. calling up, so you did really good. Yeah, that was really good. I was like, oh man, wow, this is emotional. Um, but I, I, was, I was curious. So it was A1 acting right there. Good job. Wow. I feel like Cyro was really one of the people that tried to actually reach out to Eldercar. So like he, he kind of felt like he was a father figure somewhat to him so mm-hmm. having him lost was kind of why at the beginning he was like we have to defend him we have to defend him like he wanted to just go and then after hearing everyone's side he was like okay yeah i guess we should probably do the smart thing so about uh, th- this yeah. interesting because you were mentioning about the father figure thing and it was the same when will was talking about like well this is the person that i that I saw as my father when he came and married my mom and all, all these things, right? And then it's like, okay, well, Edrahil, the reason that he's in this, in this journey is because of his, of his son. So it's like, oh, well, what, what's going to happen next? And this person just wants to, wants to hug Will. It's like the last thing that he can do. And it's like, hey, I understand. It's like this, this feeling for a son and this son just lost his father and as a father and just lost his son. It's like, oh, well, this thing. And then it's like, okay, well, I know, I know what's coming next. But then the next thing that that happened is that you that well that wheel got on the on the horse and just and just rode away. And it's like, well, there's nothing else there. So it's like, oh well, it's like this emptiness of saying like, wow, just lost that moment. And for a for an elf that lives infin- infinitely until he dies out of old age or is killed in battle, then it's like this this even even this moment is like, well, it's like this this dualism of saying like, I have all the time, but even these moments are just once in a lifetime. So. Good perspective. Very cool. Yep. And who knows, it's uh, Will's out there somewhere. So I don't know, maybe <laughs> <laughs> you guys will meet him again. I don't know, up to John. So that was cool, man. Uh, thanks for sharing. I'm back the, the, the party makes their way to, uh, to Rohan. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting. In in between now and our next session, um, I will get with you guys and we'll talk through uh, your route 
to Emmett Arnon, you have a few options and uh, uh, pros and cons to, to each. So that is something we'll talk about before the next session, just so you guys can be primed for that. Um, you do have a bit of traveling ahead of you. Oh, cool. Thanks for sharing, guys. And, uh, Elder Carr, that was cool. Didn't know character felt that way about Cyril, so that was cool. Uh, all right, so last question is, how can we apply uh, today's session to real life or to faith? Recognizing that people grieve in different ways. Mm. And respecting that. Yeah. But also finding that balance of like when you need to like address certain things because like totally ignoring it and not giving your like like Nebuchadnezzar for example just like moving on mm. not taking time to grieve can also be harmful. I was thinking about um, also as long as it depends on you not letting the small foxes spoil the vine so even taking advantage of the people that are around you and saying, okay, I'm not going to le let the little things spoil anything else there. Mm. As long as it depends on you. I also, also like, the... Good. I also just like think that Haley's going to be thinking a lot about that note in the book, the I'm a monster, what I do is evil, I have no illusions about it, but it must be done. And just sort of like processing what that means and and why would you do something if you know that it's evil and you're not wanting to do evil and like all those things that come out of a topic like that. And some people, um, feel like doing wrong is the only option they have when it's not. Yeah, for me, uh, the reminder that everyone's grief process is different, you know, similar to kind of what you were saying, Hannah, um, you know, that the grief is, is important to actually go through and not ignore, um, but uh, also recognizing that there's a lot of different ways to process it um, and as long as it's healthy, it's not wrong, right? So, um, there's, there's a lot of different ways that that grief can, can be presented. Um, and the importance of being able to show other people grace when they're going through that, that process, um, cause it, it may not look like the way that, that I would handle it. Um, but just recognizing like, that's okay. It's okay if it doesn't look like the way that I would handle it. I think uh, the lesson I can learn is like, you know, you know, know the condition of those around you, especially those who are on your same team. Uh, we did not know that Brian had so little health when we went out to do our little deal. So when he got hit, we were like, uh-oh. Yeah. Man, I didn't, I didn't realize that he was yeah. that low. Only have uh, 14 hit points. So yeah. that 110 took over half of my points. So. so, you know, it's like, it's like the same, like you're doing outreach or ministry stuff. You have a group of people that you're going with. If someone's off their game, but you don't realize it, this could actually be a very bad experience for them or whatever, you know? So it's like being, being aware of the condition of the health of your, your, your team. Uh, so they don't get taken out even by something small. Yeah. I was just going to add on to that and say, just counting the costs. You did count the cost when you stole those five coins. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think for me, just as a player, like I had planned a bunch of stuff for Cyril in the future, like, oh, when he gets to this level, he'll do this, and this is all that stuff. And then that was gone. And so when I created a new character, part of me is like, oh, man, I don't know if I want to do all this, but it it was a good reminder that sometimes stuff happens and you can either kind of be stuck in the past or you'd be like, Hey, maybe God wants me to dream a new dream and I'm going to do my best to like make another cool character and, and see what happens and um, purposely try to make him different than my past character. So I can be fair to this new character and, and see kind of uh, where the path takes him. So I think that was just a good reminder for me. And I think for other people, when, we all have times in life where stuff doesn't work out or we're not expecting things and 
we can have the choice of being stuck there or we can say that was not the best, but um, I can dream some new dreams and, and uh, make the best of some new stuff. So some new opportunities. So I think that was a, a reminder for me. So anyone else? All right. Good job, guys. Thank you guys so much for playing. Oh. A good day. You guys are awesome. Great session. Lots of fun. Got As always. Character. Got another charismatic character. Yeah. Thank you guys. Let's let our talk our heads off. Two people who always talk. It'll be great. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, everyone, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Uh, we love you. God loves you. We'll see you next time.